Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a website building tool that allows you to turn your dream into a reality. Welcome back to another episode of The Scram Line. I'm Nick and today I'm going to be showing you how to make something I have been wanting to make for such... <laughs> I almost knocked over my pineapple. I have been wanting to make something for such a long time and it is this Swedish princess cake. I think this is so pretty. Um, now, I know what's going to happen in the comments section. I understand that each nationality of people is very protective over their kind of dessert. I'm making a Swedish princess cake, but I'm making it a little bit differently. I know there's going to be a lot of people who see this and they're going to be like, Nick, that's not how you do it. That is not the traditional way of doing it. If that's okay, um, there's loads of recipes online if you want the traditional version. I'm going to show you a slightly different version. I've put my own twist on it. Um, but that's what's going to be happening today. Now, this cake is absolutely delicious. We've got marzipan on there. Now, for those of you who don't know what marzipan is, it's like an almond flavored fondant. I don't know if that's going to be the right thing to say as well. Just feel free to come for me in the comments. I can take it. Um, but it's like a, we're going to be covering the cake in it and it's delicious. Better than fondant, but still just as sweet. Um, the other thing this cake has is delicious vanilla cake, of course, and it's got uh, raspberry jam, and it's also got a pastry cream. And I know that traditionally this cake has stabilized whipped cream. This cake still has whipped cream. It's just stabilized with a pastry cream instead of gelatin. Before we get stuck into it though, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. A lot of you watching these videos are not actually subscribed. Hit the subscribe button, but also hit the little bell icon next to it as well because apparently YouTube doesn't send notifications until you hit that button, so hit the button. Okay, let's get stuck into it. Let's begin with the vanilla cake. Now, this vanilla cake is called something else. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm calling it vanilla cake, but I'll put it up on screen. Guys, you might have noticed that this cake has a lot of eggs in it. So we're beginning with the eggs and we're adding some sugar into a bowl with the eggs. Now the bowl is sitting on top of a stove with a pot that's filled halfway with water and it's gently simmering. So we're gonna very gently dissolve the sugar into the egg mixture, whisking it continuously. Once you put your fingers in there, dip your fingers in and you feel no grains, then you're done. Take it off the stove. It's gonna take about five or six minutes and we're gonna move on to the next bit. You're gonna let that cool down a little bit and you're gonna pop it into a large bowl with a, fitted with a whisk attachment. Now I'm using Peggy in my stand mixer today and we're gonna be popping that mixture into her bowl. After it's cooled down a little bit, we're gonna fit her with the whisk attachment. Guys, if you don't have your own Peggy, you can use an electric hand mixer as well. We're going to whisk this on high speed for about six or seven minutes until this has basically tripled in volume and gotten paler and really, really creamy. Now in a separate bowl, I'm going to sift my cake flour, some toasted almond meal. I've just toasted this in a fry pan on the stove on high heat, mixing it continuously until it's nice and golden. And we're also gonna add some salt in there as well. Use a whisk to mix this all together and then you're going to sift that mixture into your egg mixture and we're going to use a spatula to fold it through gently. It's really important you do this gently because you don't want to get rid of the air that you've just whipped into the eggs. Once you can see that the flour is really getting mixed in there but not quite mixed enough, you're going to pour a little bit of melted butter around the sides of your bowl and you're going to continue folding until everything is well combined. We are going to line a baking tray, well actually two baking trays, with some baking paper. I've also sprayed them with oil and we're going to pour our mixture into the two baking trays evenly. We're going to bake these and let them cool down completely. Now let's move on to that infamous stabilized pastry cream, whipped cream concoction. Guys, if you wanna make this using gelatin, there are loads of recipes online that show you how to do that. But let's move on to my method. We're gonna begin by adding some cream egg yolks, sugar, 
cornstarch and salt into a large mixing bowl. We're gonna whisk that all together. And then we're gonna pop it in the microwave for about 30 seconds at a time, whisking each time until the mixture thickens. It's gonna take about five to, yeah, about five minutes. Then we're gonna add our butter in there and it's gonna make it super smooth, silky and shiny. We're gonna cover this with some plastic wrap and let it cool down completely. Once it has cooled, we're gonna whip some cream and we wanna add some vanilla extract in there as well. So we wanna whip this to stiff peaks and we're gonna add that into our pastry cream. We're gonna fold that through gently. Now guys, I found that the mixture can thin out a little bit sometimes when you do this. If you're finding that your mixture is quite thin and it doesn't look like it's gonna be able to hold the cake together, add it into your mixing bowl with the whisk attachment and whip it on high speed for about five minutes. It'll thicken it right up. If you don't have a stand mixer, again, you can use a hand mixer to do that as well. Our cake baked beautifully. We are going to use a seven inch cake ring to cut out two pieces of cake. There's two trays of cake and you're like, Nick, I'm gonna end up with four pieces of cake. What about the other two pieces? Well, those are spares, and I know it's not ideal, but they're spares. Now, you can halve the recipe just to end up with two pieces of cake, which is what you need for the cake recipe. Um, I actually made two of these cakes, and I forgot to alter that when I made the video. So halve the cake recipe. I'll leave the instructions in the written recipe if you just wanna make the one cake. Once you've cut out your cakes, you just wanna get rid of the excess cake around them and you're gonna use a spatula to run it under the cake and lift it up. Now, to shape this cake, again, I'm doing this in an unorthodox way. This is my way of doing it. We're gonna be using a mixing bowl to help put all this together, similar to how you would put a trifle together. But before we put it together, we want to line the bowl with plastic wrap. So maybe two or three layers of plastic wrap. We're gonna add a little bit of pastry cream at the bottom of our cake, smoothen that out. Then we're gonna add the first layer of cake. Then we're gonna add some raspberry jam on top of that and smoothen that out. Then we're gonna add the rest of the pastry cream before we add a little bit more jam on top of that. Then we're gonna add the final layer of cake. You're gonna cover this up with a plastic wrap and set it aside in the fridge. It needs to go in there for three days. I know it's a while, but it just takes a while to set and really like the cake soaks in the pastry cream as well and it all just like trust me three days alternatively you can pop this in the freezer not ideal though because then as it defrosts it melts the marzipan so three days in the fridge we're going to come back and decorate this cake our cake has been in the fridge for about three days well, it's been in there for three days and we're ready to finally put this all together. But before we do, we're gonna make a little fondant rose. Now, this is really, really easy to make. Our marzipan is uh, white, so we want to color this. Now, I'm gonna be using some green fondant to help me do this rather than adding food gel to this because I find it's a much easier way to color your fondant. And we're only after a very light green, pastel green color. So add your fondant into the marzipan, knead that until it's evenly colored. We're going to dust our bench with some corn flour or cornstarch, and we're gonna roll out our fondant. Now that cornstarch is gonna prevent it from sticking to the bench. Once you've got it rolled, wrap it around your roller, lift it up gently and then pop it over your cake. So I've unwrapped my cake and popped it on top of my serving plate. You want to use the palm of your hand to stick that marzipan around the cake. And then you're gonna cut the excess marzipan away.
We're going to start off with a little piece of pink fondant and we're going to cut out some oval shapes of fondant. So I've just rolled out some fondant and we're going to cut out the oval shapes. Four different size oval shapes and three or four of each shape or size. You're going to add a little bit of water on your fondant each time you wrap one of those pieces around that cone. And once you've got them all on there, you've got a fondant rose, which looks super cute. You're gonna set that aside and we're gonna also cut out some leaves. So I'm using this cool little leaf cutter and it also indents the leaves to give it that effect of a leaf. We're gonna add some little dabs of water on top of our cake to help the leaves stick on top of there and a little bit more water to help the fondant rose stick on top of there. And guys, that is pretty much it. This cake is super cute, it's super delicious. I hope you guys give it a go and I hope that I haven't annoyed or pissed off too many people for making this in a different way. I know how you feel, I just like to put my own twist on things. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button. If you want to try this recipe this weekend, you can grab it on my website, thescreenline.com. I've left the link in the description box below for you guys. Would you like to turn your dream into reality? Well, you can with Squarespace because they allow you to launch your passion project. Are you looking to start a new business or showcase your talent? Do you want to create content or do you want to sell products or more? Well, you can do all of that with Squarespace. They have beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks so you can create a beautiful website all by yourself. In fact, my sister just started her own business. She has two little boys at home and she has been trying to find natural alternatives to keeping them healthy and safe around the house. So she jumped on squarespace.com and within a few minutes she had created an account and chosen one of the many free templates. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is super simple and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. All images hosted on Squarespace can be edited directly within your browser using Squarespace's built-in image editor. Squarespace allow you to add an open table block to any page so visitors can make a reservation for your restaurant directly from your website. So that way you can allow your website to handle that side of your business efficiently. Keep in touch with your website visitors by sending out email updates on all your latest offers and events. Go to squarespace.com forward slash the screen line when you're ready to launch and use the offer code the screen line to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. That offer code again is the screen line. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all on the next episode of the screen line.